We are once again diving deep into the National Railway Museum's warehouse. And while looking around, I came across this. It's weird having something so destroyed next to pristine artefacts, but the fact that it is destroyed shows that this device has done its purpose of saving lives. This is a duplex detonator. The use of detonators on the railway go as far back as 180 years. The first detonators were invented in 1841 by Edward Alfred Coper. He originally made the detonators with the use of the alerting drivers that there were signals up ahead in foggy weather. The circular caps were about the size of a large watch and contained about 5 grams of gunpowder with several blasting caps. The explosives were attached to the rails by the use of lead clips and were pressure activated and when the engine ran over them they emitted a loud bang and a puff of smoke. The bang was specifically designed to be louder than the engine so the drivers would be able to act accordingly. Because it took great force to make the caps explode they were considered much safer to transport and use compared to standard explosives or even flares. Over time it was realised that the detonators could be used for more than just fog detection. In fact, they could be life-saving. And are still in use pretty much the same way, even today. The best way to look at how detonators can be used is to look at a very unfortunate event. So picture the scenario. A train has derailed within a section and its coaches has fouled both its own and the opposite line. It's the driver and the signalman's responsibility to protect the up and down lines at all costs. In modern trains, emergency protocol advises that the driver must place a track circuit operating clip across the fouled lines and three detonators 20 metres apart, one and a quarter miles away from the obstruction. The detonators must be placed at either end of the line where the train is standing, as well as any lines the train has obstructed. If the train is approaching before the marker, the driver puts down three detonators straight away with a red warning flag to alert the driver of the oncoming train of the danger. If the section has a tunnel, or if the train is blocking the tunnel, then detonators must be placed at the mouth of each end of the tunnel to warn drivers likewise. The detonators must be placed to protect junctions which are affected. Only when the train and the rails are protected, then the task of taking care of the passengers and the recovery of the train can begin. If a train just happens to run over the detonators, the loud series of bangs would be enough to alert the driver to slow down and stop, reducing and minimising the risk of a secondary collision. Over time, the detonators were not just used for emergencies. Crews working on the tracks day and night started to use them to protect the line as they worked. Lookouts, the distance man or the PICAL, which was in charge of the men, would lay the detonators particularly if the visibility was low or obscured, for example by a curb, fog or tunnels. The detonators would protect the workers, especially if the workers were using equipment that was loud, and if one of the workers were injured, the detonators would stop the trains while the workers deal with the situation in safety. Today, nearly all trains carry detonators and are safely stored in the cabs and signal boxes and stations still keep a ready supply. Detonators have various uses and are accredited with saving many lives. Sadly, a minority of people do not see these circular caps as a danger. Because the de detonators are more difficult to be set off by a spark or heat, they do not need to be under a strict storage rules than fireworks and can be safely stored in plastic tubes within a secured metal box or stored in locked sheds. However, there is a dangerous craze among some to trespass on railway property and break into the sheds with the purpose of finding these detonators and some may not know the power that they actually have. Not only are these people depriving the railway of a vital piece of life-saving equipment but they are putting themselves and others in serious danger 
with some even deliberately trying to set them off or passing them on to children as pranks. The internet is sadly littered with stories of people who have mishandled the detonators and many have received life-changing injuries as a result. During my research, I was further shocked to see that many people were actually looking at websites in order to purchase them. I try not to preach at all, but I can think of no logical reason why any member of the public should be looking to purchase railway detonators. They should be treated as dangerous as any firework and should only be placed in the hands of people specifically trained to use them. When done properly and handled correctly, I will concede it is great fun to watch the engines ride over the detonators. Gunpowder has a shelf life of about five years and uh, usually the best way to make the detonator safe is to set it off before its expiry date. It's a great show to watch safely and the terrific bang after bang and the little puffs of smoke from the wheels as the engine steams by and of course, that smell of the spent gunpowder mixed with this engine steam is indescribable. The exploded detonator at the National Railway Museum poses no threat of gunpowder. It was made by Kinoch, a, a specialist in making ammo, and was made most likely between 1932 and 1937. The Science Museum collection as a whole hold five of these detonators and would have hugged the rails with the use of the lead straps. The company based in Birmingham would have provided thousands of these detonators up and down the country. The company was a division of the famous chemical company ICI, which dominated the UK in the late 20th century. Across the world, Edward's invention has changed, men has changed railway safety, and even today, the railway detonators are still making a massive impact, as well as a big bang. <laughs>